Welcome to Heidi Relationships. Today, we'll read some more stories from Reddit. But before we start, I would really appreciate if you could subscribe to the channel, like the video if you enjoyed it, and maybe leave a comment down below. That would help the channel a lot. Thank you very much in advance. The first one is titled, Wife, 28F, Gave Me, 30M, An Ultimatum Between Dog or Her. Hey guys, I've got a problem that I never thought I would have. I've been married five years, and for four of those past years, everything was going pretty well. About a year ago, my wife started getting distant. Started spending more time with her friends, more nights out, staying longer at work, etc. I talked to her, and she said nothing was wrong and that she was just getting busy with work and that she would be less busy in a few months. I believed her and decided maybe it was time to get a dog. I was feeling lonely, and I thought it would be a perfect time to get a puppy. My wife wasn't exactly supportive of this choice but agreed. Anyway, it's been 10 months since then, and I've gotten pretty attached to the little guy. He bonded very well with me, but not my wife, because she was rarely home. He's fine with her, but she has made no effort to spend time with him or me. I've found out she's been spending a lot of time with a co-worker from work, male, and it feels like she's been having an emotional affair to me. Well, I confronted her, and she said I've been spending more time with the dog than her, and that I pushed her away. She told me if I want this to work, I have to get rid of the dog. I don't think that's fair because I made an effort, and she pushed me away. I love my dog, but I don't want to be divorced at 30. Every time I bring it up, she doesn't want to discuss anything, just said she goes, or the dog goes. Her personality completely changes when I mention it, and she barely talks to me. She didn't even put up a huge fight when I talked about getting the dog, just told me it was my responsibility and that she didn't care for them. I have no kids, and if you guys need more details, just ask. But this is a throwaway and I'm keeping certain things quiet. A user in the comments said, That kind of ultimatum always seems manipulative to me. If you and your wife had a problem before you got the dog, you're going to have the same problem even after you get rid of the dog. Address the underlying problem if it's worth addressing but leave the dog out of it. Another user said, What stuck out to me was, I love my dog, but I don't want to be divorced at 30. You didn't say, I don't want to be divorced, from her. Rather, it was the divorcing at 30 years old, part. It seems as though you're more concerned about what people might think than anything else. What is it you want as a final result? The next one is titled, Update, Wife, 28F, Gave Me, 30M, An Ultimatum Between Dog or Her. Details Inside. Hey guys, going to give an update on the decision. After thinking long and hard what to do about my situation, I contacted a mutual friend of ours and asked her to be honest with me. It turns out my wife started having an affair roughly six months ago with her co-worker. My friend told me first it was mostly just emotional, them just being friends, but then it turned into a full-blown affair. Thinking back, this makes sense and matches up well with the timeline of the past year. I confronted my wife about it, and at first she said I was crazy, but then she admitted she was having an affair. More and more truth started pouring out, and she said she was still seeing him and sleeping with him. At this point, I got pretty upset. She asked if she should leave, and I said yes. We didn't contact each other for two days, at which point I decided I was done, and that it was time for a divorce. I was furious, and the fact that she was still seeing him and didn't offer to break up and seriously try to work this out told me she was done too. I apologize if some of these details seem redundant or pointless, I'm ranting a bit too. So, I called her up, told her we need to meet up to discuss some things. I told her I wanted a divorce, and she agreed without any protest. That hurt. We discussed some more things, like the house and etc., and the cars. I remained calm as I possibly could, and it was pretty civil. It did hurt that the woman I loved and married really didn't care about our love at all. I contacted a divorce lawyer that a friend recommended, and I think we will divide up everything civilly, spelling? We agreed I get the house, as she doesn't want it, and I love our neighbors. 
She wants a lot of the furniture and such, which I agreed to, and I don't really care for. The only thing we can't fully agree on is that she wants her car, but she wants me to pay the rest of, which I do not want to do. I will be making a thread in personal finance about that one. Now, the issue that plagues me a lot is our friends. We have a lot of mutual friends, and I honestly don't know what to do about that. I don't want to lose any friends because of taking sides, and etc. What do you guys suggest? I've met with a lot of them, and sometimes, it gets awkward due to the divorce. My dog is staying, and he has been a huge help to me. He has been awesome emotional support, he understands how I feel, it's amazing. I love him, and he's great at distracting me. Another thing is, my dog and I are the only ones in the house now. My 17-year-old brother has been staying with me to keep me company and help me, and I was thinking about inviting him to move in. My dad's retiring soon, and it would make it easier on my parents if he moved in with me. I have no problem supporting him, he and I get along great. Is this a bad idea? It was either that, or I was thinking about adopting another dog. Or maybe both. I really appreciated your guys' advice in the last thread, and it helped me a lot. I'm pretty depressed right now, but I am happy that I'm doing this now rather than 20 years down the line when I would have had kids and such. The next one is titled, My Wife, 28F. Found out that my mother, 59F, and I, 28M, have been lying to her about our baby, 0M, for months. This all went down about an hour ago and my wife is still crying in our bathroom with the door locked. Backstory. We had our son, now 11 months old, while my wife is in residency. She took a few weeks off before giving birth, and then went back to work a few months after, while I transitioned my hours to part-time so that I could stay at home and raise our son. My mom moved in with us shortly after the birth in order to help out, which allows me to get in the few hours of work per day and also not get swamped with taking care of the baby, housework. She's quite old-fashioned and would definitely not prefer this arrangement with me being a stay-at-home dad, but she hasn't said anything to either of us or has been a great help. For anyone unfamiliar with medical residency, it is brutal. My wife has just over a year left. Sometimes she comes and goes for one to three days, and our son is asleep the whole time she's home, which has been happening more as his sleep schedule shifted to sleeping through the night. My mom and I make sure that when she's home and the baby is awake, my wife gets him 100%. I know it's been hard on her, but unfortunately it's just going to be this way for another year. The first big milestone she missed was him rolling over. When she got home, my mom pulled her over to the baby all excited. I thought she was going to tell her, but instead she says, Julie, you came home right on time. He's been moving about as if he's going to roll over. They both stood there encouraging him, and right on cue he rolls. My wife was elated. She was so worried and guilty about not being there and she took it as proof that she can still be a present mother while working. So, we continued. I send texts over little things she misses through the day so that it's not completely unbelievable but my wife has been present for every single big milestone. He coincidentally started crawling with her right there, his first words were in front of her, and he began standing, cruising, and walking when she happened to be home. The walking one was difficult there was a tough seven-day stretch where she just wasn't home during the daytime when he was awake, and his walking went from teetering to walking a couple steps pretty confidently in that time. We put little beanbags in one of his pants pockets so he'd be wobbly and unbalanced and it looked believable since he fell after the first step like he was doing a week ago. Yes, it was mean to our poor son, but my wife's face was worth it. Today it all unraveled, so far he can just say, Mama, Dada, and, Nana. Yesterday he started saying, Bye bye. My wife has today off and has been home all morning. My mom and I have been trying to get him to say bye all day without giving it away that we already know he can say bye. Successfully got him to say bye to the ducks at the park, and we both gushed over his newest word the whole way home. My wife was using my phone to take pictures of him and began showing my mom at home while telling her about his newest word acquisition. She was swiping through my gallery and saw a video from yesterday and goes, Oh you never sent me this one. 
It was literally like a slow motion film happening in front of my eyes. I had taken the video of him yesterday waving bye bye. My wife isn't an idiot. She figured the whole ruse out pretty much instantly. I've never seen her look so upset and heartbroken before. I couldn't say or do anything to comfort her. Now she's locked herself in the bathroom crying and won't come out. I'm on our bed hoping someone can please tell me what to do to make this better. A user in the comments said, Oh man. This is a very different story from the one the title suggested it would be. Your intentions here are very, very kind, but lying to protect your wife's feelings is still lying. It sounds like your wife is feeling some guilt or ambivalence about not being able to spend as much time with your baby as she wishes she could and pretending that she is a part of all his firsts isn't ultimately going to help her deal with those feelings. You need to be honest with her and give her the space to feel whatever she feels about this. But she also needs to understand that a lot of working parents deal with the same disappointment she's feeling and come to terms with it. Another user said. This is a difficult situation. Right now, my suggestion would be to give your wife space. She needs to process this. It's hard, but the fact is that you can't do anything to fix what she's feeling. Her emotions are incredibly heightened, not only from new motherhood but from stress and pressure, and they're hers to ride out until she's ready to be helped, and frankly, she might not want that help from you. While I understand why you did what you did, and I see the love and compassion that fueled the choice, you and your mother were dishonest in a very complex and conspiratorial way. That's simply it. And your wife, even if she also sees the love behind the choices you mad, has been impacted by your dishonesty. She has been wronged. Right now, it's most important that you don't try to fix or chase away that feeling, because if you do, you will not lay a foundation to build up from this low and difficult point. Let your wife decide when she's ready to talk and be helped, and what form that help will take. Give her that space. The next one is titled, Update, My Wife, 28F, Found Out That My Mother, 59F, And I, 28M, Have Been Lying To Her About Our, Me And My Wife's, Baby, 0M, For Months. Don't think anyone would particularly care about an update but I all appreciated the insight anyways. So, here's an update. After I wrote the original post, my mom took my son to stay overnight with my wife's sister so that the two of us could have the house to ourselves. We pretty much just talked for an hour while constantly reaffirming that we love each other a lot and want to sort this out. I apologized and explained why I did what I did. She said that feeling like she was there for our son's milestones was really just a band-aid solution that didn't actually convince her she was present. She said that if she actually had been using the milestones to feel like she was present, this would probably have felt worse for her. But since she wasn't, in her words, deluding herself into thinking she's actually home, her main issue was that I lied which hurt her feelings. I apologized and explained that I honestly thought that she would prefer the lying if given the choice. She said she understood where I was coming from and that she felt betrayed when she realized, but she sees that I was doing it because I love her and she thinks we'll probably laugh about it with our grandkids one day. Yes. I am very aware I don't deserve my wife. Some things came out on my end that I wasn't going to tell her and didn't mention in my last post namely, that I'm scared she's going to become suicidal. My uncle committed suicide when I was a child, in part from working in a high-stress job where he made a huge and costly mistake. One of my wife's colleagues attempted suicide while she was on mat leave. Being a working mom is bad enough, being a resident in this program is bad enough, both combined are a recipe for trouble. Since our son was born and the incident with her colleague happened, I've been afraid that if her home life wasn't perfect, it would push her over the edge. Anyways, she reassured me that that's not happening, and I think saying it out loud also made me realize it's a pretty irrational, groundless fear. We ordered takeout and sat together watching the real videos I have of all our son's firsts. I also have a special folder of pictures, videos of my son with my wife, so we went through that after. She almost choked from laughing so hard when I tentatively revealed the beanbag trick. I am the laughingstock of her friend group chat. So, I guess we're already at the stage where we're laughing about it. The next one is titled, I Ada for staying up later than my wife to play games? I, am 25. 
usually get to bed around 1 to 2 a.m., and my wife, F, 25, usually goes to bed around 10 a.m. She has to be up for work in the morning, but I have no responsibilities, I'm a teacher and am off for the summer, but I do occasionally pick up small things like five-day summer math camps or tutoring sessions if the pay is good. Me staying up later is purely for myself, I get very bored during the day while she's not here and I prefer to sleep while she works, do things with her when she gets back, and then play games with my friends who are only online from like 10 pm to 2 am. Ever since she first brought it up about a month ago, there has not been a night that she has not complained about something. When I come in while she's sleeping, she will tell me the next day that I woke her up. If I sleep in the guest bed, she will freak out about how I don't care about her and don't want to be with her. I tried setting up a laptop with earbuds so I could just like watch movies online with people and type to them and hang out that way while in bed with her but the second I walked into the room with the laptop she got really upset and started crying and I just spent like 3 hours lying in bed awake doing nothing and she was still mad at me in the morning because I was moving around too much in bed and kept her up. I tried to stay with her in bed a few days in a row and she still complains about it which is insanely frustrating for me because I just want the issue to be gone. She has started getting really mad at me for this, making rude comments about it, things telling me that she doesn't want to see me or talk to me because I don't want to see her, throughout the day. In her defense, I could probably maintain a sleep schedule as if I was working if I stopped hanging out with my friends online. But part of the reason I went into this career is to have summers off and it seems like such a pointless reorganization of my life and I would have to sacrifice a lot of things I value so that I can be a like, sleep accessory for her and it's really frustrating for me. Also, I play games two floors down from her in the basement, and she can't hear it or see any lights at all. A user in the comments said, NTA. You clearly are trying to come up with a compromise that works. It's your holidays and you shouldn't have to sacrifice spending time with your friends online. If it is that big an issue you need to speak to her about why it is so important, and why none of your compromises are acceptable. Would it work if you maybe agree a couple of days a week where you go to bed together, and the rest got to stay up late? I kind of like your wife and go to bed early, and my husband often comes to bed gone 1am or later as he's an insomniac. Sure, it can be annoying, and he does occasionally wake me. But we just have it so that all the stuff he needs is set out before I got to sleep so I don't get too disturbed. We do the reverse for the morning where I get up earlier and have my stuff prepped so as not to wake him. Another user said, she's your wife and she want to feel like you are her husband. She wants to go to bed together. Even if you don't go to sleep when she goes to sleep you can get back up and go to your thing after. I've been in the situation as well. An incredible amount of intimacy in relationship is specifically at bedtime the pillow talk and the cuddling etc. That's what she wants and needs in the marriage. Maybe you can do that half a week and the other half not. Discuss it. Compromise. She wants to feel close to you. The next one is titled. I Ada for telling my ex-wife's friend to get out of my face when she insisted that I take my daughter to her mom's place? My ex-wife and I have been separated for over a year. We share custody of our 13-year-old daughter, she had her period for the first time in April and her mom knew and told me. She had our daughter stay with her for two extra days so she could look after her. Yesterday my daughter was staying at my place when she realized her period has started again. She seemed unwell for a while then told me she had an extra pad she carries with her but needed some more and asked if I could drive her to the supermarket to buy some. I took her to the supermarket to do quick shopping. We were at the feminine hygiene aisle and my ex-wife's friend approached me and asked what I was doing there. I told her helping my daughter buy pads she raised her eyebrows almost taking off her glasses and began asking if my ex knew where my daughter and I were. I told her yes, I lied. Then I continued walking, but she asked my daughter and knew lied. She said I knew how my ex will react and asked why I didn't call her to let her know so she could deal with the issue. I told her not her day not her issue then kept walking but once again she got in the way to inform me that I really should call my ex. I had my daughter that day so I'm responsible for any issues she deals with. Why would I need to call her mom? I'm her father not the babysitter. I got agitated and told her to get the f out my face. Then walked away. 
My ex-wife called and berated me saying I should have brought our daughter to her upon finding out that her period started and that I should have at least told her so she could come pick her up. I asked her why and she said that she's her mom she knows how to manage the stuff our daughter is new to and struggling to deal with and said it was wrong of me to pretend like I knew better than her since it's her job as a mom and it's worse because her friend saw me and felt weirded out. Then said I was out of line for telling her friend to get out my face and walking away while she was talking to me. I responded that our custody agreement consists of that I have our daughter on certain days of the week, and she can't change that. She said just because something is legally right doesn't mean it's morally right too. And if I had manners I would have contacted her and drove our daughter to her house instead of the supermarket so she could take care of everything. I argued with her and informed her my daughter wanted to stay with me, but she claimed that I was pressuring her. And that she'll be way more comfortable staying with her during this time. She insisted I drive my daughter to her place, and I declined. Her boyfriend of two months is getting involved which really pisses me off. A user in the comments said, Christ on a cracker, NTA. We have enough posts on this sub with men completely unable to deal with periods. In this generation do we really have women also teaching their daughters they have to keep their uglies from the delicate menfolk? You are her father, and you acted like a father when your daughter needed something. Anybody who says differently can piss off. Another user said, NTA you sure are right. You aren't a babysitter you're her father and if she asked you to buy pads instead of taking her to her mum's then that's her prerogative. She is old enough to know when to ask for help. Her friend has no business telling you what you should be doing for your daughter and needs to keep her sticky beak out of everyone's business. Mum needs to understand that you are a grown man with a daughter and it's her monthly cycle and that you would know what to do. Unless your daughter expresses to you that she wants her mother and you refused then you have done everything right. This is the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed the relationship stories. Please don't forget to subscribe to the channel, like the video and write a comment. I really appreciate your support and it helps my channel so much. Thank you.